Good afternoon everybody, my name is Will and welcome back to my channel, which has still got my name, I've still not decided on a pithy name, so I think it's definitely sticking the way it is. I thought just to do a slightly different video because, you know, TBRs are popular and top lists and things like that. So I thought for this instance I'd do a uh, TBR for, well my TBR shelf really. So as I mentioned in a previous video, these cubes can be three rows of books deep with a few transverse books on top. But I do try to avoid that as much as possible due to compression and things like that. But the moment I've cleared a little bit of space off it to tidy it up and we'll uh, look at what is on the TBR as it stands at the moment. So if we go left to right, the first two is a book club book for the next month. The month after next month, maybe? Uh, it was another one of my picks. Uh, Oh no, I think it's later in the year than that actually. Yeah, I think it is later in the year than that. Uh, As I Lie Dying by William Faulkner. Um, never read it, I've got nothing to base it on. Um, I think I may have read a Faulkner short story at some point, but apart from that I know very little about it apart from I think it was some of the footage I've seen for the read-along done by Strip Cover Lit. Uh, but that was, I think that was years ago now, so... Uh, don't remember any details about it, however, it's in my collection, I've not read it yet. I thought I might as well get it on there and also get some first-hand feedback from other people who are reading it along simultaneously. Next up is another pick of mine that I put on there. Uh, I think as I mentioned as well in a previous video, um, sorry about the cheap buy one get one half price sticker, sorry a bit of glare there. Um, I've not really read much contemporary fiction for a long time apart from some of the more recent Amos, but I don't, I've never considered that as being contemporary fiction. That's just me collecting works by my favourite author, which I know is a silly distinction. But um, apart from being a, as it says, 2020 Booker Prize winner, I know this is a bit of a gay fiction, a class fiction as well, about being in a working class area in uh, Belfast. Is it Belfast? I just say the back's just uh, reviews, basically. But uh, yeah, looking forward to that. That's another pick for later on in the year. Um, let's see what we've got next. Um, I tried to read them in... I think I'm trying to read them in sequence. So I think I've already read uh, Sons and Lovers by D.H. Lawrence. Was it Sons and Lovers? Yes, I've read Sons and Lovers by D.H. Lawrence uh, recently. That was very good. I think I said uh, read that in uh, tandem with David Story's Savile. And if... Uh, I can't remember what the other one was now. The other one escapes me anyway, but yeah, uh, looking forward to reading that based off the D.H. Lawrence I have read. Again, uh, apart from it dealing with the relationship of two sisters, Ursula and Gudrun, who live in the Midland colliery town in the years before the First World War. So, uh, time period I'm really interested in. Uh, and just, yeah, I just like D.H. Lawrence's writing so far. I think his use of metaphor and uh, description is just fantastic. Um, just to round that off, it's a bit out of sequence, but uh, again to go with that is D.H. Lawrence's uh, The Rainbow. I got this from, uh, my wife got this from me from a second-hand shop in uh, Elizabeth Gaskell's house, uh, which is open to the public for a fee, and uh, they have a very good second-hand book range downstairs, so very kindly my wife picked me up that, because she knew I was reading D.H. Lawrence, so I'm looking forward to that. Uh, again, uh, the Brangwens have been established for generations as a yeoman family on the border of Nottinghamshire among the coal mines. So again, same type of remit that D.H. Lawrence is sticking in with this series of books, so again, Really looking forward to that. Uh, controversial one. Um, this was in a charity shop in York. I can't remember the name of the charity shop or the town it was in, but um, I basically convinced the rest of the family to let me go into a bookshop for a bit. And then my two daughters and my two nephews and niece followed me in. So then I had to look after five kids, so in a quick rush around, a quick look, I thought, I'll get that. And curiously, I'd never heard of... Um, it's published by Macmillan, but... It was an odd imprint of Macmillan, I can't remember what it was. Sorry, not York. Uh, Lincolnshire Heritage, Jews Court Bookshop. It was very good, it was only £2, so £2 for a thousand pages of a classic, albeit controversial, for its... For the times we're living, but still, two pounds well spent. Really looking forward to that. Just have to squeeze it in at some point. Uh, next up is continuing my 
run of the Angry Young Men Club. Uh, I've read a couple of Kingsley Amy's books. Uh, Lucky Jim, The Alteration was really good. Um, I suppose, uh, the King's English was his non-fiction. That was quite good, just his thoughts about things like that. Again, uh, seems to be a theme here. Winner of the Booker Prize, 1986. The best year ever, if you ask me, because that's the year I was born. Um, so, yeah, looking forward to reading that. Uh, roughly know what you're getting. There he is, obviously King's Lewis and the way he appeared in later life. So that's another one to try and fit in at some point. Uh, sorry, from after the first two, uh, everything else is not a book club one. Uh, other picks that people have got on the book club list... Uh, thankfully, like I said, the place I work, the library there is really good. So I've requested uh, Black Brew Wine by Joanne Harris, which I think is next month's. And then there are a couple that seem a bit YA, so I'm not sure, YA esque, so I'm not sure about them. So I'll have to see with that one. Um, Gabriel Garcia Marquez, 100 Years of Solitude. I have read the. What's the other one? Um, Loving the Time of Cholera, really enjoyed that, uh, in keeping with, as we saw in another video, the book cube I've got for Louis de Bernier, so similar vibe, that almost magical realism, I'm not sure if this is magical realism, but uh, I don't see how I can necessarily go wrong with Marquez, he's a well-renowned writer, so I'm really looking forward to that. Um, Sophie's World by Justin Garda. Um... I don't know anything about this apart from it's a conversation or it's back and forth conversations between a Sophie and an old an older man. I don't know what the relationship is, but this was a book my wife read when she was a teenager and recommended to me. So it's made it onto the TBR. So at some point I will read that. Uh, looking in her mailbox one day, a 14 year old Norwegian school girl called Sophie Amundsen finds two surprising pieces of paper. On them are written the questions, who are you and where does the world come from? So I don't know if it's a bit below my reading age or, I mean, for all the looks of it, it seems to be a, just a regular book, but I don't know if it's young fiction, that's why my wife had read it when she was a teenager, if it just suited her. Um, anyway, on to the next one. Uh, Bleak House by Charles Dickens. I've read a few Dickens. I've read uh, Martin Chuzzlewit, um, David Copperfield, Christmas Carol, um... I think I read Edwin Drood. That's the one he didn't finish, so it's an unfinished one. And yeah, the Bleak House is just on the next next one to read, so is this, is this where Spenlow and Jorkins is? Don't remember. But yeah, completing on a bridge, so that's another classic to tick off the list, just to keep things rounded and well going. Uh where are we up to for time? Seven minutes, that's not too bad. Uh Primo Lever, the periodic table. I know this is a uh, prisoner of war camp biography not biography uh, history from his own point of view so I'm looking forward to that again it's the I just think I, I think I think they're just so well made these the penguin essentials range I just think they're just some of the books they've produced are just lovely little paperbacks and got a good feel and everything like that so l looking forward to reading that um, this is a loan from my uncle I have oh sorry I'll turn it down J. Bronowski, Bronowski, The Ascent of Man, which he has told me was, I assume that might be a self-portrait of some kind there, of the author, a BBC adaptation, and it's just the history of mankind, as far as I know. Uh, I don't know anything about it, apart from it was enthusiastically put in my hands as a must-read, so therefore, it is a must-read. Right, next section. Some of these have gone back to front, sorry. So, Under the Volcano, uh, haven't read it. No, it's a classic, uh, modern classic, so uh, looking forward to reading that by Mark, Malcolm Lowry. I know it's quite dense, uh, the subject matter. Uh, so, uh, not the subject matter, the writing style is quite dense, and I think he's kind of in that vein of Hemingway, of being a, a drunk who writes, but writes well while drunk, potentially. So, again, uh, don't know much about it, necessarily. Uh, I quite like arriving at books. Just based and just read it and get first impressions as I go along. Um, Land of Spices by Kate O'Brien. O'Brien. Um, this was received to me. It's a Virago modern classic, but one of the slightly older ones. Uh, I had a hand me down book club subscription, which is a book club subscription service. My wife got me as a present. They send you two books a month, and 
of the many ones that arrived uh, that I've read, uh, this one I've still yet to read, so it seems quite good. Um, I'm looking forward to it. I don't, a wonderful book and a land to be visited by the Irish Times. So looking forward to reading that. Again, don't know anything about it, but just looking forward to it. Uh, Ridley Walker uh, came across this because of Backlisted Podcast, where all I know is that it's written, written in a... I don't know the term for it, a pigeon language, is it a pigeon language or a, not Creole language, I can't remember the word for it, there is a word for it, anyway, it's a specific version of English set within the time of setting, so it's a lot of broken, things like that, so again, just uh, the reference came from a great point of view, I've had other references from the uh, backlisted podcast that I've followed, so Haunts of the Black Monsieur by Charles... Spalson, Sprawlson, Spalson. I can't, I can't remember his name, but uh, that was really good. And yeah, listening to the podcast, I just love the enthusiasm of the presenters. So uh, that was when I acquired to go on the TBR. I'm running out of space when I stack these now. Um, another King's Amos. Again, this is just one I've picked up at some point. I think I got this. This looks relatively new for one of my books. So I think I got, I must have got a voucher at some point and just thought I'll splurge and get a new. It must have been an Amazon voucher or something. I've just splurged and got a new release of a Kingsley Amis I haven't yet read. So that'll be another one going towards the Angry Young Men read. Uh, Lanark by Alistair Gray. Uh, separately, uh, The Canons. Uh, just great feeling books I've also got. Um, to do Ham on Rye by Charles Bukowski by The Canons as well. And again, uh, like the Penguin... Uh, what are they called? Penguin Essentials range, they're just, uh, just fantastic feeling books to read, they're, something about the texture of them is just lovely, they're lovely to hold. Uh, again, I've heard this referenced in many places, uh, referred to in many places, I know Alistair Gray has written a, I think he wrote a separate trilogy, but I can't remember the name of it, but uh, I thought, just worth a go, I've got nothing to base on, I've got nothing to lose, uh, it's got a good reputation, so why not give it a go? Uh, George Bernard Shaw, Love Among the Artists, I think one of Shaw's dalliances in novels, even though I think he's better known as a playwright for obviously, um, where's it gone, sorry, I've got it on a slightly higher shelf here above, it'll sneak out. Obviously I think best known for Pygmalion, uh, which if you've not read is worth a read, very, very short, uh, but very good. Uh, yeah, so I quite like... George Bernard Shaw, along with Chesterton, I think, uh, having their works which are separate, but still, I was thinking of them in, oh, there it is, I don't know why it's there, sorry, speak of it, uh, from before, so that's hot, that shouldn't be there, Haunts of the Black Monsieur, uh, The Swimmer as Hero by Sprawlson, sorry, Sprawlson, uh, yeah, so George Bernard Shaw, um, apart from Pygmalion and some non-fiction essays and public debates he was engaged in at the time, I've not, uh, read any so, uh, of his novels, so I figured I'd give it a go, and it's a uh, fairly decent size, so uh, inimitable wit and sparkle, G.B. Shaw brings us a story of three wayward geniuses, so hopefully, uh, a spirited early work which anticipated Shaw's first plays by more than ten years, so I don't know if it's going to be as well written as the other stuff, being that's one of his earlier pieces, so the jury will be out on that until I get around to reading it. Uh, the Riddle of the Sands by, is it Erskine? Erskine? Erskine Childers. Again, another backlisted recommendation. Th this is it now. This is why these are all together. Uh, and same for uh, Calvino, If on a Winter's Night a Traveller, which I began reading a while ago, and I don't know why I stopped, but I think it was very uh, story within a story within a story. So to put it in filmic terms for a modern audience, uh, Inception-esque, I suppose, would be the way to do it. Everything's a layer within a layer within a layer. Uh, again, uh, apart from good recommendations, don't know anything about them. I think this is a World War II book, The Riddle of the Sands. Is it about uh, two men who are sailing and there's a spy? Uh, yeah, when Carruthers receives a letter from his friend Davy suggesting a Baltic sailing trip, the vision of a manned yacht... A1 scenery and excellent duck shooting quickly works at charm, but Carruthers' hopes for a holiday are quickly dashed. Suspicious German activity along the coast, the Medusa, manned by the sinister Dolman, has already tried to destroy Davies. What are the Germans up to? 
nothing less than a plot to invade Britain, and only these two courageous Englishmen can stop them. Published in 1903. Oh, so published in 1903. Oh, yes, sorry. Yes, so in the backlisted episode when they talk about it, they reference the fact that it was uh, almost... Uh, what's the word? Not prestidigitation. That's wrong. Uh, casting forward, uh, predicting the future almost in terms of like what could be going on with the advent of World War One and the rise of uh, German militarism, basically. But uh, yeah, so at some point I will get around to reading those. Very good. Uh, sorry, I can't reach now. Let's have a look. So here we have... That's that one. Uh, Just So Stories, Rudyard Kipling. Um, haven't read these before. I have a couple of copies of The Jungle Book. I've got a very nice Folio Society one and then a... I think it might be a Puffin Classics one as well, which uh, I gave them my daughter, so at some point we're going to plan to do a read-along of them together, so which will be nice, so she can have the she can have the rubbish one and I'll have the fancy book, is the, is the way I'm going to work it, but uh, yeah, haven't read that before, worth a read. Uh, my uncle's favourite book series, John Goldsworth, The Forsyth Saga, I know very little about this, I know there's an adaptation of it, but I think it says it's the changing fortunes of the wealthy Forsyth dynasty. Through 50 years of material triumph and emotional disaster. So, judging by the look of it, I think it's a bit of a class style story, an upstairs, downstairs, uh, ring a bell for a servant type of story, as far as I know. And I imagine in the pitfalls, it'll be less than that. But uh, it just is well known. It's got a good pedigree to it, as far as I know. So, again, I don't think I can necessarily go wrong to it. It's just whether it's down to my particular taste at the time. Uh, next up, we've got. John Cowper, or Kofper, I don't know how you pronounce it, Powys, or pa well, it must be Cowper Powys, uh, sounds very Welsh. Uh, Wolf Solent, um, I can't remember why I got this, I think it was, I think it was in one of those interviews where it's like, mm, and what do you think is the best book that's ever been written? I think it might have been at the time I was going through a bit of a Christopher Hitchens line. And he said it was the, he thought, in his opinion, it was the best book ever written. So it seems to be a very sprawling period piece. So again, just looking forward to that. I again, know very little about it, but uh should be good. 630-ish pages, so not as, not as long as I thought it was, actually. Oh, then we've got, this is another one of the books that I got through the Hand-Me-Down Book Club. Uh, so I s selected the classics set, so every month I would receive two classics. Uh, so Barnaby Rudge, Charles Dickens, Dickens Pedigree. Don't know anything about Barnaby Rudge, but his first historical novel was set against the infamous No Popery riots that were instigated by Lord George Gordon in 1780. So I imagine some of the reference points, if it's based on real events, might be a bit tricky there. Uh, to grasp, but can't really go wrong. I know Dickens wrote periodically, up uh, four periodicals, and worked the stories he was writing based on audience feedback, and would tweak them to suit. So it sh it should be good because he wrote exactly to the audience at the time. So I imagine it should, even though it might be outdated by today's standards. I still do like Dickens' style, so. Looking forward to that at some point. It's, again, a fairly hefty book. That's the problem. I can read roughly. What can I read roughly? Um, I think I'm, I've already read somewhere between 15 and 20 books so far this year, so I'm not the fastest reader. But if I get the opportunity to, I can get through it. But then with the book club being like prescribed reading, so it's not just reading completely for leisure, it's to a schedule and we have meetings uh, that has thrown a bit of a spanner in the work of as I would just go through these and just plod through one at a time. Um, but yeah, so some of these heftier books might take me a little while longer to get through. Um, White Teeth by Zadie Smith. Haven't read any Zadie Smith. Uh, I've read some articles she's written in, like The Guardian or The Independent. Uh, and I've liked that. Um, I think she was described as being in a follow-up vein to writers like Will Self and Martin Amis, which I think might have been the route in for me to get the book in the first place, but... Um, was this the debut book? Yeah, the debut book, which for... A 500 page book is a 
bold outing. I don't think Zadie Smith looks anything like that now. I mean, the celebrity status and fame from what I've seen in other pictures of her seems to she seems to hold herself more than just what looks like a photo she took of herself. Um, yeah, but uh, don't know anything else about it. Apart from it's a debut, which is incredibly impressive to a lot of people, so look forward to reading that. And then I will try and move them all forward and set them up if I can. So we have volume three, volume two, and volume one of We All Hear Stories in the Dark by Robert Sherman, which was... I don't think it was featured on a backlisted podcast episode, but it was referenced with one of the guests and I will I'll read the beginning if it's in if it's in here because it just really got to me <laughs> really got to me where's it gone I don't know where it's gone but there was a was it an opening line where he said something like Anyway, the guest on the podcast said the opening line or the beginning to one of the stories uh, just arrested them completely um, because he had lost his wife and was going through grief of being widowed and started to read this and, oh yeah, here it is, sorry, it's the, oh, I can't remember the name of that term, that bit, a bit that's not actually a part of the book, but uh, the story, but is a, ah, oh, something plate. Something plate. I can't remember. Epigram? Epigram? No, epigram. Uh, whatever. You, you'll know what it is anyway. But it basically says, Once upon a time there was a man who lost his wife and tried to find her by reading all the books in the world. And... Which is moving in itself. But I've not even started this yet. But just that part carries such emotional weight for me because that man did just lose his wife. And tried finding her through grief by reading these books and the way it works is that there are short stories and as far as I understand it you get the option after finishing each short story if you want to go darker or lighter in tone and based on his accounting of it he almost worked his way out of grief because he found he kept choosing to go darker and darker and darker and then found himself feeling emotionally suffocated and just wanted to get out of it and then read some strange horror story about a cat, a talking cat or something like that. And it just helped lift him back out. So I, it, it just sold me on the idea. So at some point, this is one that I'm going to chip away at over time and just see how it goes. And I'm just intrigued to know that if it can do that for somebody emotionally, then there's there's got to be something there. Or was it just the right book for that right person at that right time? But either way, it was well lauded so uh, i'm really looking forward to that so yeah so at the moment that is the tbr shelf and um yeah at some point i'll probably do a library tour just to go through all the other cubes and see what's there but uh for now i thought that would do to see where pending any gifts or i might get or birthday presents or christmas presents or whatever where my reading of books i own is going to go for the year so far and Random plug, because I've just seen it. Um, excellent book. Anita Bruckner, Hotel Dulac. Uh, fantastic story. Sorry, that's just a random segue, but just seen it. Uh, yeah, so until uh, next time, BookTube, uh, thank you for watching. Goodbye.